Hey guys, and welcome to the next episode of the Kotlin Cato series. And in this part, we want to publish our application to the cloud and especially to the platform DigitalOcean. Before we start, um, I want to stress that we depend on the last episode, so on episode six, where we created a fat jar and a Docker container. And as I said, we want to use DigitalOcean today. And I have prepared a specific link, which is a referral link. And if you don't have a DigitalOcean account, it would be really nice if you would use that link. And yeah, DigitalOcean is a hoster for virtual machines, databases, storage, and apps. And the apps feature is what we use today. So they are basically Docker containers. And in that Docker container, we will run the Kato server. DigitalOcean will take care that the application is publicly available on the internet. And DigitalOcean also provides an auto update mechanism. But we will come to that later. With that referral link, um, you will get a free credit of $100 for 60 days after you register. And as full disclosure, if you buy something with $25 or over $25, DigitalOcean will give me also $25 over that link. So if you want to support me, use that referral link. And before we can actually start deploying the app, we need to upload the source code to GitHub or GitLab, for example. And I have already done that here. So here on GitHub slash klsio slash kato tutorial and branch episode six will be the code with the Docker file here. And if that is a private project that you want to publish, that's no problem. GitHub also provides private repositories. Okay, so let's go to DigitalOcean and click on create apps. And from there, we click on GitHub. And now we can select a repository in which the code is that we want to publish. So I choose Ktor um, tutorial. And if you don't see the repository here, you can click on this edit GitHub permissions link and update the allowed repository, which can be seen by DigitalOcean. Now we have to select which branch should be deployed. So in your case, it's most of the time the master branch, but I have created for each episode a single branch. And as we depend on episode six, I have to select the code of episode six here. And here I can check if the container should be automatically rebuilded and redeployed. If there are any code changes in that branch, that's also really cool. So you don't have to care about redeploying. That is all automatically handle, handled by DigitalOcean after you have pushed the code to GitHub. Okay, click on next. Now we see that DigitalOcean has detected a Docker file. We, we can select what type of service this container is. So in our case, that's a web service. We can change the HTTP route, but that's okay. We can set some environment variables here. So for example, passwords for databases and so on. If you want a video how I publish an advanced web server with, for example, access to a MySQL database, I can do that as well. Just let me know in the comments. We can specify a custom run command, but we don't need to do that in our case because we set a cmd command in the Docker file and we can specify the HTTP port here, but 8081 is already correct. Click on next. Then we can select a name for our service and we can select a region where the server should be located. 
So there are two different locations in North America, two locations in Europe and two locations in Asia. So there, I'm sure there is a region which will be nearby to you. I will use Frankfurt and then we can click on next. And now we have to select a plan that will be used for this web server. Unfortunately, we can't use the starter package, which is yeah, free or which starts at free. That is only possible for static content. So only for HTML and CSS and JavaScript, but not for complex backends like Node.js, Python, Go, Ruby, PHP, Docker, and Java. Yeah, here we have some other um, limitations, but for a basic test, that is completely enough. And what is a little bit confusing here is that $5 per month um, price. So that's the maximum of price that you will be charged in month. But if you only want to test that for some minutes, then DigitalOcean provides um, a minute plan as well. Um, I have asked that on Twitter. So if you don't want to buy a complete month, then just select that plan and only the minutes you have installed that container, you will be charged for. Here below, we can set the RAM and the CPU of the container. So it starts with a 500 MB RAM and one um, virtual CPU. And after you have selected, you can launch the application. Okay, now you can see that the container is building. You can click on few logs to see what the Docker build command currently executes. And I would say, let's wait until the container has finished the work. Okay, after some minutes, DigitalOcean should be, should have finished its work. And when you scroll up, you see deployed successfully. So the container has been successfully built and run by DigitalOcean. And to access the app, we can click here above on ktutorial um, dot on digitalocean dot app. And we can see that the hello Kator content has been outputted to our browser. And we can also call the test route and we get this is a test as a response. Here in DigitalOcean, you can click on logs to see the console of the Kato server. And when you want to destroy the container and don't want to pay for that anymore, you can click on settings and go completely to the bottom and click on destroy. Now you have to enter the app name. So that's Kator tutorial, click on destroy. And now the container is away again and you are not charged anymore for that container. Okay, that was all for this episode. I hope you liked it and if you have any questions, let me know in the description. Have a nice day and see you next time. Bye.